I don't even know where I need to log on to do this stuff. Okay. That's, and I'm not positive on that. We're, we're at the 95% done. The money side. The side. Okay. All right. We don't, I mean, we want to get into the AP stuff, that's where we could but really everything else is probably at 90%. Okay. What area? This is turf grass. That is food science, and that's landscape. And what's what? Landscape. 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 Okay. On the right. webinar, do you want me to show the national app? Or do you want me to show your PowerPoint? Uh, show the PowerPoint. Can you give me the PowerPoint? I emailed it to you this morning. Oh, great. All right. I'll I emailed it, and there some rubrics that I'm also going to um, reference. I emailed that stuff to you about awesome. eight ish this morning. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Shortly after eight, we're good. All no, right. I, I figured, and I was like, well, she just grabbed it. Yeah, will make it work. Really? This is the first time through. We're going to be flexible and understanding. That's right. We're going to be very laid back. You bet. How many days? For your flight for what? <laughs> AEP workshop in Texas. Texas. Oh, yeah. No, no. no. Only well, take me with you. We talked to Roger yesterday during the after board meeting. He showed us the new state degree app. Yeah. I just thought it'd be, I like Texas and you know, she was like, I think it was a month, $50 for a shop, probably getting there. I could do it for a thousand. How was the grind? How many times did you get there? It's only like 14 hours. Okay, now you're all like so, 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 I didn't believe you like that. Okay, so you're too confused. Go find one here. Diana, are you okay if I share these rubrics and this PowerPoint with everyone that I actually have hard copies. Right, for the group that's here. Yes. But for anybody that's webinar, I can yes, go ahead yes. and share electronics. Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. I didn't want them to, yeah. So, if you only want to talk about your own of the did she start the first year? Yeah, but after all these Okay, Left off. Yeah. Did you say this was going to be on a webinar later? Yep, we're with a webinar and we got it recording and I, I've i got PowerPoints and rubrics that we're going to share with everybody too. Great, awesome. You bet. Uh, we didn't know any heat. Uh, is landscape a uh, mixed, it's entrepreneurship and places together yeah. now, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Food science would be as well. Turf grass is as well. 
small animal person. I own all my stuff. Okay. Um, but that is in a mixed area. Diversified horticulture. Ag sales placement. Having placement. Ag science integrated system. I did. We got nowhere. <laughs> but basically, we do need to review it. Ag sales entrepreneurship. Okay. Okay. And dairy places. Were you saying my name, Mindy? I'm sorry. I was. Uh, I was. You're good. In the midst of questions, there. Diana, that'll probably make it stronger if she's mm -hmm. versus places. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry? Yeah, yes, it's a mixed area. And it's okay to be mixed, but if you're if you're an owner in the business and there's inventory to be had, there should be inventory. Yeah. Yeah. And she just twenty five. Right. Mm -hmm. Is it working up here? Yep, I think we're good. Um, All right, I think we got a couple of them just stepped out to the restroom, and then I'm ready whenever. I need to go to the restroom. Yep, go do that now. <laughs> I don't want to interrupt the question. Oh, don't worry. We're going to be very laid back and casual. I'll follow my own advice, Mindy. <laughs> okay, so I am not spread in a little toy. So she adds all her balloon inventory, okay, because she has her head symptoms. We've got pain because her pants just always a little bit. Right. So Diana can set all the patterns. But if she could, is it like animals where you can only depreciate it? Like if I put it on the actual blue page as inventory, it's not like a little white. Can you only depreciate that? So you have been No, you can depreciate it. You're on mine. Oh, you from like 13, 14, 15. Yeah, it can depreciate. It's like there's wear and tear. So do you have to put that on the white page one then? Or can you put it on the page? Because remember there was always some issues with depreciation. It would probably have to go on the blue page, but it works for now. You're talking about it. You'd be rushing right? Yeah. I wouldn't worry about it. Sure. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Make sure that if it's just got 25% of those, make sure you have the entire value. Yeah, and then we do, and then at the bottom, we do, yeah, because she makes 25%. And she pays for 25%. Like, so all the propane and stuff, she pays 25%. So she gets 25% Good. So then the inventory will be 25%. So, I was just going to go back and I was like, we're trying to figure out. I don't know why I've never had an issue. Like, so anyway, okay. All right, I'm going to try to get up. What the, it's hard for him because they wouldn't be on the fight by placing that program would disappear. That's what it said. Mindy, my basketball coach, he's leaving. He's got a new job. It's a bad day. Art's gone. So we call them, we call them Mark and Tom Hart. Conflict now. Because I don't want to conflict. And he's going to be so good. Our kids, we don't do so much. Kelly Griffin asked me to be here. Mr. Oakley. I think you're fine. Oh, really? He's going to be here until then. Oh, okay. You're talking about it. Oh, no. 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 Oh,
You can let me know you can hear us or not. Betsy Berger, can you hear me? You got to take one last week April. I'm saying everything that's on your mind. I'm already learning how to behave. Yeah, you don't want to be a teacher. I did come I went back and I went back and work. I thought I was perfect. Huh? I just to go lay down with the to look like 11. Oh, you How are you? I was going, boss. How are you? Good. See you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Diana, if you're ready, I think we're good to go. Um, I know we're recording. I don't know if everybody can hear me that's still online. Um, okay. I think yes. I need to make sure that they can hear me. So, Susie, if you could send Mr. Edgar in when you get a chance. But, and close that door. That would be great. Okay, so what I need to know are from our teachers that are online, can you hear us or that are on the phone? Good morning, everyone. Not We're going to do sure. a little sound check here. Yeah, I'm not sure we have our sound where we need it to be. I'll click on sound check again. Okay. Good morning. Somebody let Mindy know how the volume is coming through. Can our participants hear us? Perhaps not. Who's somebody that's on that I can call, like, text or? Uh, Betsy Bergner's on. Jeff Clifton is on. Sarah Farnsworth's on. Tim Arnold. They have lots on. I think we have 12 total. Let's see if my microphone. Okay, can you hear me now? Can those that are online hear us? Can you guys hear us now? Hmm. Yeah, we can. <laughs> what does he say? Does he say anything? <laughs> can the attendees who are on hear us? They should be. They're not all muted, so they're not responding to us. So, and I know they have speaker because I just played this little bit. It's not everybody. I like unmuted, like Betsy and. I'm trying to unmute some of them, but they're not talking back to us, letting us know they can hear us. They must be able to hear us. Sarah Farnsworth, can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, we're all set. And everyone can see Diana? Okay. There we go. Thanks. Sorry. I guess we could do it. I just didn't know. Thanks. Sorry for the seven minute delay here. We'll try and make up some time. So, uh, good morning and congratulations for being here. That means that you guys are safe. Because you 
Okay, this is not going to work. Little hints and things that I'm going to go over with you. We're going to take a look at how you're going to be scored at the national level. Uh, I did bring along some sample applications. They may or may not be of maybe national proficiency finalist quality. So. Um, we'll have to bear with that, and then we're going to give you some independent time to put into practice some of the things that we talked about, um, maybe ask questions, get some guided practice, that sort of thing. So that's kind of our game plan for today. So first of all, I'm Diana Lushen. I teach at TriPoint High School, and I am excited to work with you, and I'm excited that so many of you are motivated to do as well as you possibly can and took time out to be here today. So thank you for that and hopefully we can uh, get you some something that will help you be competitive. So uh, if you have questions as we go, we want to be very informal today. So if you've got a question, you know, stop me or um, jot it down and ask you know, when we take a break or whatever you need to do on that. So please feel free. Uh, when we're done, I know some of you, how many of you rode with the mechanics team here? Okay, those of you who need to go at that point in time, if, you know, just go ahead and go, and if the rest of you want to work or take care of some additional questions, um, I'm happy to help as long as you need help. So, all right, so we're ready to get started here. Um, maybe? Okay, so the question is, why is it that we're here? That's, we say that in opening ceremony, so FFA members, why are we here? Um, one thing is, as I just said, because you are a state winner, so again, congratulations on that. Your goal, I hope, is to represent Illinois to the best of your ability, and it's very nice, I will say, when judging national applications to see a really strong app from your state go through, and it's very disappointing to see a weak application or no application at all in that uh, area. So we're hoping for the former of that. And of course, I would think that your goal would be to win at the next level. So hopefully we have some national proficiency finalists and winners with us in this room. Right? It might as well be you. It's going to be somebody. So um, that's kind of where we're at on that. And if you're sitting here thinking, well, the project is a little small, don't worry about it. You know, it's about the quality of the application that you guys put together. Um, every time that I've had a star or a national winner, they've absolutely been the smallest in scope of the, the four competitors. So don't let that worry about you. Um, actually, we have someone on the premises here today who is a national winner in a very competitive livestock area, and I think they have three head of breeding animals. So it's all about the application and the effort that you put into it, seriously. So uh, with that said, things that you can win, if you are a finalist, you're going to get another $500 for your project or your pocketbook. You'll get a plaque. You get to compete at the national level. That national interview experience is very valuable, that you will use that skill again and again and again. And then, Mrs. Bunselmeyer, did you happen to determine about the Costa Rica situation for this year? I, I assume it's a go. It is a go it for national go. Space, yes. All right. So there is a Costa Rica travel experience that the national finalists are going to be able to compete for. And one really cool thing about that is it is free to you as students. Oh, I see smiles already. That's good. All right. So what better thing than a free trip to Costa Rica? So, but you got to be a finalist to try for that. So if you like to travel, that's another incentive, another motivation to do that. All right. Uh, I've actually had two students go on that trip. It's awesome. I've been on it myself, which we'll talk about here. So again, the Costa Rica travel experience, uh, you would get to see all kinds of fun things. And again, did I mention that it's free to students? All you got to do is get to the city of departure. Everything else is paid for. So now you advisors in the room are also going to be invited to go if your student is chosen. It unfortunately is not free but it is a very cost-reduced type of trip, and it's great to see other forms of agriculture, pineapple production, bananas, macadamia nuts, coffee, and so on. So 
another ulterior uh, goal for you. So with that said, okay, so on the application itself, first of all, when you are moving from box to box in this application that National has on their website, uh, which I think we asked all of you to pull up. Do you, did you all locate that okay? When you are moving from area to area, box to box, please, please, please make sure that you use the tab to do that. It does not save very effectively if you don't do that. We have a little issue once my students are nodding back there, all right? So we can tell you from firsthand experience it doesn't always save for you if you just uh, move an arrow or whatever. Use the tab button. We'll, for the flick of a second, you'll see a little blue um, disc-like save icon pop up and it goes right away. But uh, it doesn't always save if you don't use that. So please do that. All right. Now, some hints. Make sure that you are specific about the SAE you are applying in. That was probably one of the biggest things that I saw this past summer I judged at the national level. Just make sure that you are on the topic of your SAE. All right? Um, example, I was in a placement um, evaluation committee. Equine people were especially good at this. So a lot of, we have an equine person in the room, don't we? Yes. Yes. No. Yes. yes right yes. here. Mm -hmm. All right. So a lot of people in equine placement uh, work there to work off boarding their horse in the stables, and we read all kinds of things about their horse. Well, your horse is really an entrepreneurship type of project, and that's not what we're considering. So those people were kind of muddying the waters and losing some credentials with the judges because they're talking about things that were not equine placement. So stick to the topic at hand. Right? If you are, um, if your grain production, don't be telling me about um, your garden or your soybeans. Soybeans belong in fiber and oil. Those sorts of things you have to stay specific to the area that you qualified in. Right? I know several of you have strong SAEs in other areas. Now is not the time to brag about those on your application. We don't want to hear about them. Um, we also saw this. Don't show pictures of different SAEs. And I'm going to kind of come back to that one, but be super careful in your pictures that it is depicting the area you are applying in. Okay, just so if you are in small animal production and you also happen to have horses, make sure that we're not seeing horse pictures. Okay. All right. Just make sure that the judges are not having to guess about the either the validity of your project, whether you're in the right area, those sorts of things. Spell it out very clearly. Another one that we had, we had a fantastic project come across our table in the area of an ag mechanics placement. Um, it was written up as placement, but there were little things throughout here and there about my tractor this and my tractor that. And there was a news clipping about um, she had taken her tractor to this and that. That sounds like entrepreneurship. And so we had to penalize points on that. Probably would have been a national finalist if we could have not had that uh, issue there. So be just super careful of that. This is just my little reminder to talk about that particular situation. All right, timing. This was another thing. This was one of those things where a lot of applications came to our table and we had to put them in the participant pile right away. Uh, and we didn't even score them. There got to be such a big pile of them that national staff did go back and do some scoring of those, but you know, they're probably going to be bronze. You don't want to be bronze. You want to be a finalist. All right? So timing is very important. Your applications, ladies and gentlemen, are as of December 31st, 2015. Do not in any way, shape, or form include something from 2016. 
Don't mention it in a picture. Don't talk about your banking plans, your loan that you have for the project to carry on in 2016. And the place where we saw it the most was um, in the efficiencies, where you would say, all right, in 2012, I made $8.50 an hour. And then they would put, and in 20, well, for you guys, it'd be, and in 2016, I'm now making $12 an hour. Automatic. Out of the heat. In the that's space. been something that they're, like, she's getting her pilot's license because of all the hours. Don't give a day. Anything. I'm currently working on my pilot's license, period. Okay. Don't, do not put 2016 in there in, anywhere. It's just very dangerous. Very dangerous. They told us they're automatic participants. And when we had a heap like this, then they had to go back and do some scoring. But those were never going to be national finals. Question. I've been competing in Westminster 2016 in mind. Should I take that out? You're not going to be able to mention that in the application itself. Uh, you, you could mention that you participated there if you took out the year. Um, I don't know if that's something that you did previous to that or you were working towards that. That's something that you're going to have to evaluate, but absolutely don't put anything in 2016. Just don't put the, those four numerals in that order anywhere in your application. It's, it is a, it is just a, a terrible thing to have to take an otherwise nice application and move it over into the participant pile. And it's so easy to do because, you know, by the time we're filling it out, we're halfway through 2016. So it's very easy to do. Don't do it. Um, okay, so another thing on the beginning side of this, and Illinois doesn't have quite so much uh, issue with this, but when those, especially those of you who had junior high programs, you may use some previous years to high school, but again, it muddies the waters, and then we have to think, was that before their seventh grade year? Or what year was that? So my suggestion would be, Things that you did before you were in high school, I would say, when I was younger. Don't say, in 2011, I did this, right? Because then they have to stop and think, this kid is this, this year in high school, in 2011, puts them back in fifth grade. Oh, that's before the qualifying time, and psh, it's just like 2016. Now you're automatically a participant. Okay, so be, be very careful about timing. Timing is everything, so make sure that you're not too early in your experience. The way that you get around that is when I was younger, you did something or other, and by all means, don't reference 2016. All right, questions on those? Even in your honors and awards, you don't reference 2016? It's probably not going to be quite as critical on your resume. I would still say to leave those out. Okay. But if you're a 2015-2016 officer, do you just say you were elected in 2015? You could do, you could do 2015, probably 2016 with a dash in there because that was begun then, or you just put 2015 chapter president. So like for a star in agri science, like a 2016 star, mm -hmm. don't put that. state star final. Just say state star finalist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Or state star placement finalist. I mean, it was it truly was so disheartening. There were some great applications to participate. Just in case. So let's not take that chance here in Illinois. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so um, back in September of 2015, I earned the title of Miss Warrior of 26. Can I use that? I would put um, September 2015, Crown Miss Teen Rodeo, Teen Rodeo. I would just put that, and I wouldn't put the 16 on the end. It happened in 2015, you certainly can take credit for that. But really, ladies and gentlemen, the, the thing is that it cuts off December 31st of 2015. Now, occasionally, if you get to be a finalist, when you go to national convention, um, I had one of my finalists who had something really big in this project happen the next year, and the judges right out of the gate said, oh, it's been a long time since December 31st. What uh, new and exciting things have gone in your project? Tell them all about it. Tell them about the dog show. Tell them about the queen thing. Tell them whatever it is that you want to tell them. They opened the door for that. But the application, don't forget. 
Now, uh, hopefully, someday, some of you are going to apply for your American degree, and if you're uh, doing a star battery for that, if you're a finalist, they will let you revise your American degree to include up until, help me out, Mrs. Bunsmeyer, is it September, August 31st, I think, or something yes, like yes. that. Yes, yes. So they'll let you know when you can change the dates of the time frame that they're considering. Otherwise, it's December 31st, 2015, don't go beyond that. All right? Questions on that? I know it seems so basic, but it, it's going to be a problem if we do that. All right. So now let's talk about kind of where we're trying to get to. We need to have a target of where we're going. All right. How many of you have looked at the scoring rubrics on National's website? One. Okay. That's what I thought. So um, I made copies of these, and I have them sorted by the area that you are in. So by my judging, we have two entrepreneurial <coughs> students in the room. I think I know right who they are. Um, so that's going to be, raise your hand if you're entrepreneurial, but I think it's just, um, now, if you are entrepreneurial in an area that is mixed, hold on. Okay. So I think those two are my only two. Yeah, my kids. Yeah. And no, we're they're mixed. mixed. Okay. They're mixed. Okay. Okay. Now, if you are in a placement only category, placement only, you're not competing against any entrepreneurs. Casey will get you sorted up with that. Thank you. Thank you to Casey for hanging on up. Who are my agri science persons? Yes. Okay, and advisor of agri-science seat. What's your name? All right, this is Schaefer. And there you are, your wall. Anyone else put? And then here's the combined. <laughs> okay, so if you are in a mixed or combined area, you may be entrepreneurial or you may be placement. It does not matter if it's an area where they mix them together. So those are going to be our outdoor recreation, our landscape. Our small animals, fruit, environmental, turf, landscape, egg processing should be mixed. Yes. For those of you who are watching on the webinar, these rubrics are available at FFA.org. Advisors log in and get to your dashboard, go to awards and proficiencies, and then the rubrics are listed there, as are the sample applications that I'm going to be handing out a little bit later. Entrepreneurship. Okay, we got that. Uh, placement. There you go. Now, one other thing, since only one of you has gone to look at the rubric, one other thing I would point out is there are lots of other valuable hints, tips, and other things to look at associated with the proficiency part of the national website. There are comments. They ask the judges every year. If you could talk to the students who applied, what would you tell them as far as things to do, not to do, things like that? And those are on the website under judges' comments, I think it is. Hi there. There are uh, also some like best practices. The rubrics are there. Sample applications are there. The sample applications, some of them are quite good and others of them are just there as samples. I wouldn't aspire to be like those applications. Aspire to be better than those. All right. Do you guys need chairs? Um, if you go to um, participate, awards, then proficiency. Do you guys have enough chairs back there, Doug? I think in order to see the rubrics and things, you may have to be logged in as either like a student or an advisor. I don't think the general public can okay. see those. I'm so, okay. And you said there's safety here, too. Yes, there are. I know for sure in the advisor one, I don't know. I'm sure the students surely have them as well. 
All right. So this rubric, ladies and gentlemen, this is the exact same thing that I filled out, you know, hundreds of them this summer. This is what the judges are going to use to score your application and your competitors. So you can see what it is that is going to score well, now that we have our rubrics handed out, and what scores low points. Okay, now, I know that you all can read, and so we're going to kind of just set these aside for a minute. If you have specific questions about them, we'll kind of come back in our, in our time. But do be sure that you take a look at the rubric so that you know what your target is. Right, because this is the exact sheet the judges get to score you. All right. Now, moving into the application, we all have performance reviews, whether you are in the research part of it, whether you are placement, entrepreneurship, or in mixed, your application includes a performance review section. The first hint that I would give you is use all the space they give you. Right? Um, this is not a, an effort to use as little ink and toner as possible and to put you know, a few words in there and be done and cross it off your list. Right? I'm guessing that you don't have that attitude or you wouldn't have taken time to be here today. So that's great. Use the space to tell your story. All right. It is okay to refer to photos that you may be using later in the application. So as an example here, I have one of my uh, students' applications from previously, and he's talking about his profit levels and use of niche marketing, and then he's talking about his technologies, computers, iPads, and other technology to assist with my efficiency, see photos, page 21 and 22. On those pages, we had pictures of your home office and I think uh, scanning a customer's credit card with an iPad or some such thing, illustrating what we're talking about here. So you can reference a photo uh, anywhere in your application to kind of substantiate what you're talking about. It's a nice way to kind of lend credibility. Oops. Another thing uh, that I saw another state do in this section, oh wait, no, this is one of ours, uh, challenge solutions. There's a question in all of the applications about, tell us a challenge that you, sorry about that, <laughs> shooting rubber bands. Mr. Uh, let's see here. It says, I see the single greatest challenge. Yep. Is Number three, here. and it's the same for all of you. Briefly explain what's the single greatest challenge you faced and how did you overcome that challenge. So to make things simple, I would suggest, because the judges are going to be looking for what was the challenge and how did this student overcome that, is identify challenge. Put the word challenge there okay. in all caps, some way to set it off so they can see it and describe what your challenge was. Then go down and put your solution. Now, you it would be nice, of course, to have solution over here, but then you're not using all of your space. And we were tight on space, so it's okay. This works. All right, so solution, here's the solution to the challenge. Problem, solution. All right, so go ahead and identify that so the judges can clearly find those sorts of things in your application. Okay, something else in the performance review is be creative. Uh, a lot of times we see, ever since I was little, blah, 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 right? Which may be the case for you, right? But let's find a different angle to take it because, ladies and gentlemen, everyone else says, ever since I was little, insert whatever else is happening. So it's overused. In fact, it's so overused that it is listed in your judge's comment uh, portion on the National FFA web page. Think of yourself when as you, a judge. When you say that, it's listed there for what reason? Because they want you to use something else. They're okay. tired of seeing that, gotcha. so to speak. You have to understand these judges are brought in from across the country. They're there for a whole week in a hotel, 
conference area reading applications all week long. You have to do something to differentiate yourself from your competitors. Because they're going to be like, oh, here's a different one. And it's kind of like program of activity judging for you advisors that have been in that. You know, after the 175th one, you know, uh, being creative is appreciated. So if you can, that's great. You may be saying, well, how would I do that? I pulled this off of an application from a student of mine. Uh, ever since he was little, I can tell you, he was all about farming. Okay, but he kind of took a little, little different angle. So from an early age, I had an interest in farming. Okay, there's nothing earth shaking there. But then he went on and said, each year I eagerly looked forward to Christmas when I got more components to my growing toy farm set. I farmed on the setup every day. A little bit of warm, fuzzy. Now the judges can relate. They're like, oh, yes, I, I can envision this little type with their farm set. Uh, <coughs> and then he went up to talk about how his parents don't farm, but they're both involved in agriculture. Grandparents got him involved, yabba yabba yabba. All right, so that was, he could have said, when I was younger, I used to, I don't know, dream of being a farmer. But that wouldn't have captivated their attention. So if you have some warm, fuzzy sort of thing that you can incorporate in there. I'm not saying to make the whole, because your space is limited here, folks. So do it concisely, but I think it is worth taking a sentence to do something like that, to lend a little bit of uniqueness to your narrative. All right? I can't say this enough. Watch your spelling. Watch your grammar. Stay in the same tense throughout. Don't move from first person to third person and so on. And honestly, in the sample applications that we're going to look at later or for you guys on the webinar, you can look at them uh, at what FFA.org and the sample app. There are grammatical errors. There are punctuation and spelling errors. Uh, I was looking through them again last night. One of them has a serious tense issue. All right. So you hope that you don't have any. We're not perfect. You may send something in that, that has a, an error, and your world will not end, but it certainly speaks well in your application to do the very best you can in terms of all those language arts skills. So with that said, other teachers are a great resource. Ask them to read it over. Your English teacher or another person who's very good at those sorts of things, now they Keep in mind, you're asking them for spelling, wording, grammatical help. If they say, oh, well, I think that you should talk about how you, I don't know, vaccinated your dogs differently, well, they're not the experts on that. You are. So use them for what they're experts for and stick to your guns on the nuts and bolts of your project. The word that. It's really usually not necessary. You may have had your English teachers, or if you're one of my students, I have harped on that in the past. The other thing about it is it takes up space. And remember, we're trying to make the maximum use of the space they give us. So if you're like, oh, I'm in the middle of this great sentence, and it tells me I'm out of characters on the application, you can look for words that are unnecessary, such as that and other things that you can remove. Look for ways to kind of reword, to shorten it up, and finish that brilliant sentence that you're in the middle of. Again, proofreading just cannot be um, just cannot be stressed enough. All right. Some of you had mentioned you had concerns about the financial side of things. So let's talk a little bit about income and expense summary. Those of you who are in a placement only area. You don't really have to worry about this, okay? But our mixed, our entrepreneurs, and our science people all are going to have this income and expense summary page. Think of your state degree applications, those of you who have recently maybe gotten the state degree, page 8A. It works the same way. In fact, it is the same page, right? So if you have done your state degree application this year or last year, and you have that available to you, that will be very beneficial. However, I caution you, we talked about this a little bit earlier, if you have a very diverse SAE program and you are qualifying in one part of it, 
this page, the income and expense page, is only about this particular SAE that you are applying in. So let's say you have diversified livestock and you have dogs and horses and you are advancing with your horse equine project. You've got to remove all the money and expenses and so on having to do with those dogs. Right? It can only be for this project. Right? Uh, again, only this SAE. We talked about that. All right. We're going to get up and move around in just a minute. I want to talk about one more money thing here. We struggle with this in Illinois. I'm just not going to lie. Mm -hmm. All right? We do. Current and non-current inventory. Again, if you're placement, you're off the hook for this particular application. All the rest of you, you have got to get this right. right? And we, we do an incredibly poor job of this in Illinois. So current and non-current inventory. They are sorted into two completely different areas on your application. we got to get them in the right spot. If we don't, it's going to hurt your chances in your application. So, a current inventory in assets is something that you own then, an asset, which we can readily convert to cash within one year. But these are small ticket items. Examples might be a seed, if you're a, a crops person or a garden or something like that, your seed. Um, let's say that you are in poultry and you have frozen chicken products in your freezer that you're going to market. Those are current. Market animals of any kind. I put hogs on here because I like pigs. But so too are your weathers for your sheep people, your steers, etc., etc. Livestock feed. Gasoline. We were just talking about gas before we started with some of these. Diesel fuel. Um, if you're in, what are our areas again that we have here? Those of you who are, oh, fruit production. If you've got uh, chemicals, pesticides, a sprayer, a hand sprayer garden hoses, those sorts of things are current inventory items, and you would want to list them as such. Now, non-current inventory are things which you are going to hold on for more than a year, and they're going to take longer than that one year before you can actually kind of convert them to cash. Big ticket items. Okay? So, example, all your breeding animals. I don't care how big or small. If it's a breeding animal, it is absolutely non-current. Okay, can you hold that for just one second? Equipment, such as lawn mowers, freezers, trailers, tractors, all those equipment types of things always fall in this category. Um, if you were in beef and you had a cattle shoot, those are kind of big expensive items. They are non-current. If you're fortunate enough to have buildings, those two are non-current. Question? Yeah, um, it's not really anything to do with my state. Okay. Um, I also have horses, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if you were, like, training horses and planning on selling them, would that go non-current? If it's a breeding horse, it is non-current. But if it's not? If it is a gelding, you would probably call him current, I would say. Even, All right. if, even if you took like young ewes that you first time breeders and then you were planning on selling them as bred ewes or bred heifers and you want to sell them as bred heifers and you had all attention to that, you still don't call them current. You, they're all non-current. If I'm understanding, isn't there also now a spot on the application where you can transfer Yes, them? you can transfer. So you, that would be a transferring item. So like if you if had they gotta, if 10 they're early ewes. Herd, they need to be non-current. I don't care if you had them from when they were itty bitty babies, or you bought them as little lambs and then said, oh, she's pretty good, I'm going to keep her. With all intention of getting her bred as a yearling and selling them as bred you ever use. They all go under non-current. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You're in a mixed area, like she works at the locker but owns nothing. How does that affect her application that she's in up going up? I mean, does she really, is there, should I have her like think back and say something? That she did buy? Not did necessarily. Okay. Uh, it would be very typical for a placement only student to not have inventory. Okay. In fact, it would look probably more uh, questionable to have inventory if you are 100% placement. Now, ladies and gentlemen, too, on a lot of them, there's a the little sliding bar. Don't forget to do that. 
where you slide what percent of your project is entrepreneurial and what percent is placement on those mixed uh, things. So she owns 25% of the business, so she'd be 100% entrepreneurial, right? The way I'm seeing okay. it, or we talked earlier. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Okay. So we're going to do a little practice here to see how well we're paying attention. Current or non-current? My purebred Angus cow. Non-current. All right, good, because she is a breeding livestock. What about five gallons of diesel fuel? Uh, current. Oh, you guys are good. Uh, current, my 50 pounds of dog food. What about the dog's leash? Uh, current. Yeah, it's not a big ticket item. Concrete hog feeder. Uh, Non-current. How about a walk-in refrigerator? Uh, Non-current. All right, very good. What about 10 dozen eggs? Maybe you're going to resell them. Yeah, those are current. All right, very good. So make sure that you get those in the right spot. That is another big red flag if we have issues with that. A couple more things on non-current assets. And this is straight from the horse's mouth. We got started. We did our judges orientation at National, and they said, and now we're going to introduce this guy named Jim Casey, and he's some ag financial something or other. And he spoke to us about expectations financially on the application. And I wrote down verbatim, he said, if you buy breeding animals, they must be depreciated. Now, I know that doesn't get to the raise thing, but we, we cannot buy a cow and not to depreciate her. That is going to be a major problem on your application. The judges are going to go, that's not good record keeping. Points off. What about, um, so I didn't buy any of my dogs from... Since I started the record, but okay. my minor you already owned them, huh? yeah. And but you, they should be for sure non-current. If you did buy them at whatever point you bought them, they should be being depreciated. So all of them, if you bought them, okay. if you raised your own and kept them back to incorporate into your breeding, not birds, but. Dogs. Yeah, what is uh, the dog group called? Yeah. The dog group. A group of dogs. Group of dogs is called a pack. Like a pack. A pack. Okay. All right. All right. So you merged her into your breeding pack, then you would not have to depreciate her, but she's still non-current. Okay. Okay. Well, I didn't buy any of them. Okay. So they're all non-depreciable. So they would be non-current, non-depreciable. Okay. Right? And I have several students who have acquired things in we, what we said earlier in the uh, in my younger years, and so on the depreciation page in our record book, years acquired may be you know, way in the past. That's okay, because it doesn't go on your application, but it figures into the value, the correct value of that item. So, breeding livestock is depreciable. Now, interesting little story. We have, oh, my group did not, but I heard about this one kind of as we were discussing things. A young individual was raising cockroaches and selling cockroaches to the pet store for whatever creatures eat cockroaches. I don't know. Sounds creepy. Creepy. Anyway. Yeah, creepy. All right. So the students from another state had purchased additional female cockroaches to incorporate into his breeding herd, or group, whatever. He did not depreciate them, and he lost points in ability to keep and use records because he did not depreciate his female cockroaches. All right, so they take this stuff very seriously at the <laughs> national level. How long does the female cockroach live? I don't know. Way too years. long, if you ask me. But anyway. Really? Okay, I just was so, like, if the thing's going to be dead in 10 days, why? Yeah. I, I don't know. Creepy. But just as an illustration as to how important they think this is, people are losing points for not appreciating female cockroaches, for goodness sakes. Make sure that you don't succumb to that temptation. And there's my little reminder of my cockroach give you the full creeps for the morning. Now, horse people are, we, we have an issue with this, too. And I know my, my students, my own children, we have struggled with this. But again, out of the words of national people, you may not appreciate non-current inventory. Yeah, I got a three-year-old and I trained it five times and tiny it was worth more than I can say that. I, I grew up showing horses. I fully understand your pain. I do, but I'm just telling you the rules. All right? So we cannot appreciate our non-current inventory. That's a, 
It just, we can't do that. All right? So, so as, would you say to go ahead and put the value of that horse the first year at what you think it might be worth after training it? Wouldn't that be the best idea? That would be an idea. Um, I can't tell you uh, how many hours around my own family's dinner table has spent arguing about, because I'm married to a banker, you see, whether you value your animals at market value or their full potential as a breeding animal, because I had both ends of the spectrum there and made for lively conversation. As long as you're consistent, that's the important thing. You can't start out one thing and then switch. Uh, that's what's going to get you in trouble. Be consistent. All right. Um, a couple more things that they said is uh, those of us who have non-current inventory don't use any IRS things, even though your tax person may suggest that you do that. Don't do it for record book. Use straight line. Again, straight from national staff. That's what they said. And then your depreciation line, when you are uh, when you're looking at your numbers, the depreciation line, of course, should be negative because you are depreciating, losing value. So make sure that that is negative. All right. So here's an example, right off an application of some current inventory and how you would account for that in your application on the financial pages. So we have, we have feed, we have some semen, uh, we have an AI kit, supplies. Um, this person owned 50% of one enterprise with a sibling, so he was only valuing his half. Fans, heat lamps, bulbs, uh, consumables of all kinds, fuel, grease, twine, spare parts, all that stuff that you have laying around. Compare that to a non-current uh, depreciation schedule. We have a grain platform to go on a combine. We have a semen refrigerator, uh, hog feeders, a collection dummy, blah, 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 blah. You have to put in your acquisition cost. Notice it doesn't ask for the year. So those of you who acquired it way back in your junior high days and before, that's fine. Just put how much you paid for the thing. Your depreciation, depreciation claim to date will be here, and this minus this is here. As a little hint, this is the part that needs to match within your application. You may need to adjust here to make the math work. I'm guessing that you probably didn't. The 786, as documented in the record book, I'm guessing it was close to that, but needed to adjust the numbers to get to this total here. That's we, okay. We have a question from the webinar. Okay, fire away. The question says, my area is beef entrepreneur. I do not have my breeding cows depreciated. When we did my book, uh, teacher said we did not need to depreciate out of the breeding females. Should we go back and rework all the numbers in order to comply, even though they are non-current inventory? Well, if you wish to be competitive, you're going to need to depreciate those cows. I'm, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to take an afternoon and sit down and do that, I would say. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Do we have any other questions? Nope. All right. Any questions from in here before we go on? All right. Another question? Um, breeding staff would be non-current, and if you bought the female, they would be depreciable. They're even bigger than a cockroach. So what happens if we have her after her life, after her depreciation life? Okay. Uh, you know, good question. So let's say that this said rabbit breeding does here, and you had $300 worth of does, and the depreciation was $300, and they would be technically worth zero here. But you're still showing them, and that's how they would be valued then also on your um, financial statement and your inventory. Mm -hmm. Yep. I know it's a pain, and I know a lot of programs don't do it, it's going to jump up and bite you at national if you don't. So, okay. <clears throat> Let's move on to learning outcomes, efficiencies, and some of the, these other sorts of things now. So all of you are going to have to come up with some things that you uh, can measure the efficiency of your operation by. And so this particular one I just stole out of one of my students. 
with his permission. And so his efficiency factors are listed here. So he's got everything from average hours per work to number per week, number of chickens purchased, and so on. So the beginning year is going to be your first year of your records of this project. Make sure you get the year right. And how much you did. So, for example, number of chickens purchased in 2012, he bought 2,100 birds. This is where we wound up with that uh, year problem a lot. We had a lot of people here with 2015. So, you guys, it would be 2016. That's out the door problem, right? So, your ending year, December 31st, whatever that year is. So, last year it was 2014. And what did you do that year? Oh, looky here, he bought 18,782 birds, right? So it's a way to give them an idea of your, from beginning to ending, how you have accomplished things. Uh, and then over here is your description as to why does that even matter in your project? Why is that important to your program? <clears throat> this is where I would suggest um, anytime that you can put on specifics, do so. So this student is talking about um, weights of birds, that's specific there. And then my little hint up there, it may be good to explain something that appears to be undesirable about your project. I mean, let's face it, as a judge, we would initially think that students should be putting in more time as they increase their project. But instead, this student was more efficient and found ways to save time. You always want to be efficient. You always want to increase your, um, your uh, besides efficiency, you want to increase your managerial opportunities and those sorts of things. It's five? How many can you add there? Uh, five. Five. Mm -hmm. uh, so, now, this was a partial year. So when they looked at the, his total numbers and a different thing, this 2100 was very puny because it was just a few months in his first freshman book. But in 2014, this was actually less than 2013, and oh, why did we do that? Oh, because we already had quite a bit of inventory built up. They can look, oh yeah, that would be it. So that's also kind of a way to explain things that might be a little bit confusing. Using less speed, butchering the chickens at a lower weight as per customer uh, request. There's a reason for that, and then the judges can go, oh, that makes perfect sense. You had a question for us. Yeah. Um, so Yes. Do you suggest we use as levels? Like, my advisor's been having me put in beginner and then, like, expertise. You can do that. I would really advocate trying to find something more measurable. Okay. Um, if you can, more specific, more measurable is going to be advantageous, I would say. Another question. Um, so, for a placement book, how would we, is there a sign that we would have to alter this? You would. Uh, you may talk about you may talk about your tasks and that sort of thing. Let me quick look at your placement app here. Um, so this example app that National has on there talks about career experience. Um, this one is learning shop safety. They have 10% knowledge at the beginning of their experience and 100% knowledge at the end. Uh, if you didn't know anything about something, you can put yourself at a zero and then give yourself, if you know quite a bit about it, 95, 100%. You can use percentages to help tell the story. And if you're in this an area that's mixed, yes, playing the entrepreneur, but you can put some knowledge in there too, or should you always put numbers? If, if I were claiming 100% entrepreneurship, I would... 25%. Oh, 25%. But 0% but placement. Oh, yeah, that's what I would try and use the measurable numeric things. Yes. Anything else? Question. Yeah. These placement kids are writing and they work for mom or dad. Uh huh. How do we change that to... My employer? Okay. I would 
if, if you work for family, those of you who are in placement, if you work for family, I would minimize that to the nth degree in my application. I would talk about my employer, my boss, my supervisor. I would not say mom and dad, blah, blah, blah. Okay? Do not do it. All right. Skills. We are going to all going to have to come up with skills no matter what application you have. You're going to have five skills up at the top, and you're going to pick them out of your primary pathway. So for you livestock and animal people, you're going to pick the animal pathway. You crops, kids are going to do the plant pathway, et cetera, et cetera. All right? So you're going to pick skills that are in your pathway, and then the next five parts are going to be supporting things that you have learned to do that are not in your pathway. So for example, last year I had a student who had poultry. He had all of his animal things in the first five, and then the supporting things were things like out of the food um, pathway because he was selling frozen chicken stuff, and uh, business pathway, well, keeping records and so on and so forth. All right. Um, my suggestion, again, this is the time to break out the calculator, ladies and gentlemen, and be as specific as you can. Tell us percent increase. Tell us, um, you know, you can just say, I've increased my sales throughout the years. Well, that's one thing. But if you tell me I have increased my sales by 62.5% in the last three years, that's far more telling. So numbers, percents, dollars, some, some way to put a numeric item with it, whether you're placement or entrepreneurship. So if we, um, I'm placement, but mm -hmm. if, let's say I want to talk about like a certain like mastitis treatment. Yes. And it has increased our number numbers by a certain percent. Did I talk about that or is that yes. too much? No, by all means. You could talk about how you have learned to implement this mastitis treatment. It's been very effective and it has increased the productivity of our herd by 42%. Yes. Specific, specific, specific. All right, detail, detail, detail. I just cannot stress that enough. Use, I would suggest using a given skill in a pathway only one time. It, it is conceivable that you might want to talk about a couple different things. Uh, let's say that you were an animal person and there's some uh, skill about, about feeding and you wanted to talk about rate of gain being increased, and then you also wanted to talk about dollars saved in feed or some such thing. Unless it is really a critical point to your application, I would really advocate that you pick a different one and use different different uh, skills from your pathway. Don't Probably don't duplicate them unless there is a major reason why. Okay? Uh, here's another thing. Seems like everybody go, gets down into those secondary ones, the ones that are not in your main pathway, and they must be go, oh, I don't know what else to use. Oh, time management. I'll write that down. I wouldn't do it. Everybody does it. Don't put that down as one of your challenges. Everybody puts that. Be more creative. Give us more meat than that. All right, so that's just my, my little hints on that. Okay, so... Here's the example that I was telling you about with the crops or the uh, bird students. So AS is just gonna, out of the animal systems pathway. He's going to demonstrate safe animal handling, implement procedures to make sure that animal products are safe, formulate feed rations, and so on. At a quick look here, this one excluded, but there's something measurable in each one of them. Freezers are set at zero degrees. Right. The chickens getting enough protein, the feeding program, they, here's your percent protein, how long we're feeding this, so on and so forth. The particular breed of chicken, 33% of their uh, body weight is the breast, the most marketable part. Right? Not just, oh, I chose this breed because they have larger breasts. How much larger? How bigger? Give percent, dollars, uh, specific if it's something that's measurable, give something specific. Uh, that I think is really, really key to being um, 
successful. Here are the supporting ones then for, remember, this is a poultry candidate. So he is in the food area, uh, talking about the food processing industry and raising all natural, healthier, blah, blah, blah. Um, here's an ag business about the financial, the income statements, balance sheets, etc. You get the idea. So you can use, uh, here's accounting. That one was used a lot, I would say, um, by a lot of candidates. Maintaining files, record keeping, etc. Okay, so first five are all about your main pathway. Second five, not in your pathway. Things that you also have learned from your project. Again, as specific and measurable as possible. Um, you will uh, placement people. In your application, there is a spot where you are going to list your experiences, and you're going to do it by year. I'm going to give you copies of these, but I don't want to fumble around with papers right now. So each year, you're going to list kind of what you did, how many hours you spent, and so on, just to make things easy. I would highly recommend that you put them in the same order each year. So for example, let's say that I worked in, I don't know, I'll use Illinois only, food service, and I worked at Burger King and McDonald's and a caterer. And so the first year I did that, I had Burger King, McDonald's, and catering. The second year, don't go catering, Burger King, McDonald's. And the third year, go Burger King, catering, McDonald's. Put them all in the same order so that they, the judges can compare your progress from year to year. All right? And then, uh, <coughs> excuse me, make sure that your years are labeled appropriately. Okay, another thing that I saw another state did, which I really liked, is on their skills, they put the word skill. So the skill is, I know how to do this. And then the impact for knowing that skill has allowed me to do this in the project. So kind of like the problem solution we talked about in the beginning, you placement people, I would consider listing your skill. I mean, put skill and put what it is, and then put impact and put kind of its relevance to your program. I thought that made things really clear and easy to read and score. And I'm like, what did I think of that? So, I like that. I did too. Um, and so just here are some more skills and things like that. So, the, the, the example doesn't have it, the skill. No, it thought. doesn't because I, it was from another state. Right, but that's, the, that's how we want to list it. Yes, I, I would definitely just do that like you if did I with the. Um, Problem solution. Problem solution. Challenge solution. solution. There we Challenge go. Solution. You bet. All right, you guys have been sitting for a while. So, oops. We are going to play What's Wrong with This Picture. And I have some pictures for you to look at. So, those of you who are in the back row and two of you from here, you're going to look. I'm going to give you 45 seconds. That's it. You're going to run back there and you're going to look at those three pictures and try and figure out what's wrong with them. The other two of you in the front row, you're going to look at that set. They're the same. You guys are going to look at those, and you people are going to look at those back there. And, oh, and there's a set there, too. <laughs> All right, ready? <laughs> Go. I don't see you moving. This is designed to help you stretch your legs. Get up and move. <laughs> I hope it, there's something new in there. I don't know. I really want to get hold of it. That would be frowned upon. Ohio's application, so every one of them is in the same format. Oh, here's my thing. 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 Oh, here's my thing.
National Web loves to use these pictures for their promotional things. And although it's not a part of the score, it, it still matters. So if you are taking pictures and FFA gear would be appropriate in any way, shape, or form, then wear it. Now, if you get an FFA t-shirt and you're a welder, don't do that. That's not, not long sleeves. So here's an example. Uh, I, again, I could use him because I have parental permission on this one. So here's some FFA gear. We can see the logo. All right. He's not breaking any safety practices. He's working with his veterinarian on a uh, ultrasound of a cow. And then he tells them all about this ultrasound business, how many days it is. And during this span, we can identify the gender of the calf. And he's had 100% accuracy, all this measurable. And then how has that affected his bottom line, his efficiency and managerial skill? Oh, it's helped him adjust weaning times and feeding rations to better manage the cow herd. All right. Then, we've, now we know specifics and we know that we have used this skill to improve their efficiency, their management, etc. All right? Personal page. You're going to have to come up with a personal page. I find that one to be kind of challenging. It can be kind of whatever you want it to be. So that, that's what makes it hard. Again, don't duplicate anything. If you already told about it earlier, don't put it on the personal page. It's a chance to tell more of your story. Uh, this is one of my students. Again, I have parental permission here, so I can do this. Uh, she was in swine a few years ago, and so she put her uh, PQA card and news article about winning a national sweepstakes, that she's part of a validated herd, and a cut sheet for their market hawks. So that's one thing. We kind of have a format like that that I do with most of my students. So is that done on Word and then you import it in? It, yes. Actually, it's not even imported. It's just attached. Would a, How do you, I don't say you attach it. Well, when you no, send you the like hard. You print it and you insert it into the packet. Because when you do the national application, you'll do everything online, and then you will send us the hard copy. You'll send us the online copy by June 1. And then we'll have our team of reviewers review them. And then you have to send us your hard copy by July 1. And when we get that hard copy, that's what we will send on to National. So that's what, that's what so yeah. like it's a law book, any newspaper, anything like it that? It could be anything you want. Just don't. And it, does, it can be all separate things. Like yes. Yes. Uh, again, just don't repeat anything that you already talked about. Use it to tell another part of your story. Questions? So would a replacement would like a milk check? Kind of. Yep, a milk check, a pay stub, um, any of those sorts of things. Something else that I saw at National that I really liked was they had made a collage of different pictures, but then they had labeled each picture with the skill or job or task that they were doing. And they weren't skills, jobs, and tasks that had not been mentioned before. There were some really nice ones from some other states that I had followed this format. So I, I did jot it down. Okay. Um, what you don't want to do is have uh, pictures of the same thing with no, just random pictures with no captions or anything. You got to tell about them if you put them on. And you don't want it to just be writing either. No, you don't want no. it to be like a resume or a, yeah. A, yeah, a, re a letter where you're just writing them another letter. Not a, not a letter. I would not recommend <laughs> that. Okay. Some random stuff. And I use that word for a purpose. Use professional language in your application. Avoid words such as stuff and other slang and less technical uh, words. This is your chance. You are a young professional. You need to reflect that in your application. And I assume that you all know we did not mention this. But the application is the only part that goes to national. Your record books don't go, and you don't go unless you're a national finalist. And even then, they won't look at your record books during judging there. Right? So you have got to tell your story on, what, 10 pieces of paper. That's why I'm harping, don't repeat anything. Okay? Tell the whole gamut of everything and tell it once. The judges will get it. All right. Make sure, I did not know this at all. I guess we just got lucky on this one. Make sure the version number yeah. is the same. It prints a little version number down here on your application. And it needs to be the same on every page of your application. 
The reason why we got lucky last year is because last year was the first time they did the online version. This year they will not be lenient, and if the version number doesn't match, you'll get automatically DQ'd. So if not you, even bronze yeah. DQ. If you switch something and you don't just print, reprint one page, you can reprint the whole thing. I think the signature page doesn't have a version number on it, so that you can get your signatures piece done. Mm -hmm. But when I talk about the signature page, that's important too. We had a kid that got thrown into DQ because the principal signed the wrong line. Of course, I didn't notice it when we turned it in. I mean, it, it looked like didn't look like there was any blanks to me, but the principal signed the wrong line. They didn't think the principal's signature was there. They DQ'd. Well, we they we were not protested it, but we looked further into it because like, no, we did have the signature of the principal. Called back, they moved them to bronze, but that was it. I mean, there was no no hope of getting any further. And so, do make sure that the right people sign the right lines. Um, and, it, and we don't always catch that because we don't know the names of principals and those type of things. So do make sure. They are very particular about some of the smallest, smallest things. Yeah. All right. Another random item. Uh, I have said this before. I said this before. I cannot say it enough. Be specific everywhere. You know, you may, if you're working on your chapter's POA, you're familiar with SMART goals, specific and measurable and so on. Use those same practices here everywhere. Dollars, percentages, increases, etc. Don't duplicate anything, only this project. Again, these are kind of my review things. Now, for the advisors in the room, for us here by the owl, please, as an advisor, don't try and include specific information about their project, because if you don't get it 100% wrong, it will conflict with what they have, or 100% right, it will conflict with what's in their application, and then the judges have a big question mark. Yes, so, well, is this advisor misinformed? Is the candidate not telling us the truth? What's what's the story here? So advocate for the candidate about what they have done managerial-wise, what a great student they are, how they've developed the project. Leave out the numbers and the dollars and the specific things and leave that to your student. And that's just the letter. That's In the advisor the statement. Advisor statement, yes. Which is the only part that we do anyway. Yeah. What if our advisor switched halfway through? Like if our advisor was hired, but we had them started, and we have a new advisor that only helped us for a short period of time. You're going to, Mrs. Bunsmeyer? You're still going to want that new advisor. You're, and you can ask the old advisor to give them help, you know, and even, or even if you had the old advisor write it, the new advisor still has to sign off on it because that is the current advisor that the National FFA has on record for being the advisor at that school. Yes, that, that would be another probably DQ. Thing. Yeah, yes, Touch. yeah, it could get tossed mm -hmm. just that easy. All right, finishing touches. On, yes, ma'am. Either one. Either one's fine, as long as it's current. Uh, yeah. yeah, and they both can. Like, I mean, Jamie and Mr. Van Dyke and Mr. Rusk and Mr. Seaver can all three sign up. I don't, I'm not sure I'm not going over your problem. Are we language? From? Well, some, 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 some. Okay, yeah, so yes, yes, either one. Boom. They, they can sign. All right, some finishing touches. I would recommend using nice, heavy, but not cardstock, just good quality white paper to print your application on. White, don't use like parchment uh, certificates, fancy schmancy stuff, just white paper. Then if you want to use heavier cardstock for your pictures, you can. Don't do the whole thing on cardstock. It's extremely annoying to the judges to try and work that hard paper through there. So just get a nice weight white paper and print the thing out. So copy paper is typically like 16. And so there's a there's a weight of paper that's 20 that is between copy paper and um, cardstock. And that weight of paper is just a little bit heavier than your copy paper that comes out of the copy machine. And that and is, again, as long as it's white. Yes. Uh, in fact, we have a special ream of paper at our chapter of that kind of heavy weight paper and that's for our applications. So, um, but don't do cardstock in the whole thing. All right, <clears throat> so hopefully there's been some hint or tip that has been helpful to you. Uh, of course, Mrs. Bunsemeyer is our, our lead person here. So if you have questions, you need something, she is the person to contact, and I imagine you all know how to get a hold of her. If you wish to contact me for some reason, here is my email, or you could text me. That's fine, too. 
um, feel free to, to do that, and I will answer to the best of my ability. I am certainly not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. I think Mrs. Buckshine just couldn't find anybody else to do this. Whatever. Well, so. to your credit, though, Mrs. Leshen has recently judged at the national level. She judged last summer and just went through this. And so it wasn't just because she's had national finalists and national winners under her resume as an accomplished program and and students and teachers, but also because she has judged recently. So both of those factors, she has had national winners, um, both of her children who are national winners and other students as well, but she's also been a judge at the national level very recently and we thought that was very helpful. Um, to also help you know we do, we will find the information if I don't know the answer to your question. Uh, Mr. Kraft, who was the executive director before me, just retired last summer, he is still on the National SAE Proficiency Committee um, for uh, for at National FFA. And um, I can always refer back to him if I don't know answers to your questions. And I do frequently refer back to him for answers to those questions. But these are the details that Diana has shared with you today are details that Mr. Kraft doesn't typically or hasn't typically shared with us. Um, he is more the technical answer to your question about current and non-current inventory, those type of things. The details that you shared today, especially with the um, not duplicating and not putting the year, I didn't realize that the year putting 2016 could get you tossed. I didn't know that. That's not been shared with us before. So this has been, to me, very, very helpful. So I know now is the time to ask questions, but before we do that, I'd like for everybody to join me in giving Diana a round of applause to show our appreciation. That I, this has been very helpful. And now I feel like when somebody calls me, I can send them this PowerPoint, send them, make sure the rubrics I know are important. If there's one thing I've learned in just my short time working with National FFA is they refer back to the rubric for everything. So as you're filling it out, I would, I'd have that rubric there handy with you um, and, and use that. That's the one thing they always tell us, rubric, rubric, rubric. Use it, learn it, know it. So Now what questions do you all have? This is so when we, again, back to areas where we have a placement at Oxford, so the kids that are competing in the same area, are yes. there tips that you saw that would help make that placement kid more competitive? I think it's challenging for them when they go up to town that owns their own business and they just work. I agree. And I, for that reason, I personally really dislike those areas with my students in them. I, um, at National, they had us grouped by the type of rubric we were using and I was doing placement all week long so I wasn't in the mixed category but you know at the state and actually I was a room host at national in an area that was mixed uh, more than once and sometimes the placement kid has won. Um, I think the key is to show not I just show up to work and do my thing is I'm actually involved in learning about the management and the managerial decisions, and um, my boss can count on me to make sound decisions and learn more about the operation and that sort of thing. I think it really ties back a lot to that, that managerial part of things. Yeah, but I, I have an incredible dislike for those mixed areas. I do too. I just don't like them. Other questions? All right, I'm I have no checking. idea the status of the mechanics CDE at this time, but if we don't have any more questions, oh, okay, or if you have a specific question, maybe it's financial in nature or whatever that you didn't want to share, just holler, and you have the time and the computer is available, yes. you can either yep. log on and work with guided practice, Mrs. Wunzelmeyer is right here, I'm here, we have some other expert teachers in the room, or if you're like, no, I'm out of here, um, that's fine too. Um, so, oh, wait, one more thing. I do have hard copies of the um, sample application, and I have a sticky note on top as to what category it's representing. So we take off the bottom, if you would, and you can grab. I have the placement, the research, the combination, and the entrepreneurial ones, and I'll lay them up here. Are there any other questions for the whole group? Um, I will email the PowerPoint to all your teachers. All right. And the and the rubrics. I'm going to send that yes. whole email that you sent to everybody. Okay. And like I said, the rubrics are just straight off of national. Can we lay these out here? 
Here's placement, the combination one. I have, oh, I also have hard copies of the PowerPoint from today. If you would like, I, I specifically did not give it to you at the beginning because I didn't want you like reading it, but if you need to refer to it, there it is. What happened? Oh, my science ones. Science research or whatever it's called. Yes. Yes. Let me get the webcam stuff down and. Well, is there some reason that I cannot 